We have someone else on the line. This is one of my favorite guests that we have on. This is Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Uh, you know, I've been filling in for Tom a lot over the past uh, you know month or two, and I've gotten to speak with him quite a bit. And it is just, it is so in depth and amazing his analysis, right? And he's been calling this bullish move in gold, and we have seen gold just make some stellar movements. You know, so has Tom in his Gold Report newsletter. Again, check that out. Uh, but we are with Tim right now. Tim, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on, Tim. I, I really I look forward to this. So I'm yeah. interested to see what you have for us today. All right. Uh, we'll start on chart one. Perfect. We'll, we'll take a look at the bigger picture. And um, this is just a simple chart. Uh, chart one is the uh, SPX. Uh, going back to uh, 2016, I keep kind of showing this chart, but you usually start off with the bigger time frames, show where you are in the bigger time frames, and we'll kind of drop back, go down to the weekly, we'll go down to the daily, and, and try to figure out exactly you know, what the market's going to do on the short term basis. But on the bigger time frames, we may stall here a little bit. Well, the reason why I circled the times when the uh, monthly SPX. 50% of that trading range closes above the upper Bollinger Band. And so all those red circles there mm -hmm. are times when at least 50% of the trading range for that month closed above the mid Bollinger Band. And normally when that happens, you get a little stalled market. Sometimes it's just a, a minor stall for maybe a month. And sometimes they uh, call big declines like back in October 2000, or that would have been probably... Uh, January of 2020, right before the the uh, March crash. But anyhow, if you notice, uh, the month of February did close above the uh, upper Bollinger Band by 50 percent, and I got two uh, circles there that are kind of um, thick, thick circles. Right. And I'm thinking that the previous time, the back in 2021, I got a circle there. It, it's probably going to be similar to that. Because this market's not really set up to have a big decline. We're probably in a trending market, probably similar to that 2021, looks like about January time frame, looks about that, right? Where the market kept trending up. Sure. And I think in this, this month, probably uh, we're open and closed, probably pretty close to the same level. Yeah, even though we're about halfway done uh, with the month and the market acts, we're long and, uh, uh I may be a seller before the week is out, but uh, we may hit a uh, we are hitting a new high here. But I don't think that high is going to last. I think he's going to pull back. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, the month of March, even though we're up uh, decently, I don't think we're going to end up this high before the month is out. But on a bigger time frame, I think it's just kind of a stalled market. Mm. March is pretty much the sideways, and uh, then from there, I think April is going to be up. March is going to be up. So, but anyhow, uh, over the next 30 days, I think it's going to be kind of a, a trading range market, but not any deep decline of any consequence. So if you're a short-term trader, you know, we're still long. I think I'll be long probably until maybe Thursday or Friday this week. Then um, I may pull the trigger and get out. Uh, but let's flip to chart two real quick. Sure. And you know what's so good um, is I'm flipping to chart two, like with these minor pullbacks is it's just good to get in at that time, you know? Obviously, it's a longer-term play, but I love seeing those little pullbacks. So we're on chart two right now. Yeah, we just, yeah, this is a pullback. You know, I, I actually got long last Friday. Nice. There's a couple of different reasons. Uh, this week is the strongest eighth, seasonality-wise, is the strongest week of the 52 weeks of the year. And ironically, next week is the ninth weakest week of the year. Mm -hmm. So, and these seasonies, uh, seasonality work out pretty good, but I need other confirmation, you know, because I won't just go off the of seasonality alone because, you know, you're kind of shooting in the dark. But uh, so I'm thinking March is going to be just a sideways uh, month. But anyhow, let's go to chart two. And this gives me a little uh, uh, confidence that uh, any pullback should be minor. Anyhow, I got some bunch of stuff, but this is the weekly SPX going back to 2008 or 9, 2009. But what I want to point out, this is a weekly chart, and the top window is the uh, RSI for the, uh, weekly R uh, for the weekly SPX. And normally when the RSI gets up around 80 to 85, 
it's never the final high. You have minor pullbacks, which I think is going to happen in March, you know, kind of a sideways month, but it's never the final high. So this gives me confidence that, so if we do pull back here later this month or beginning at 1st April, I'll probably be a buyer. And one of the reasons why is because this chart did hit 80 as we're, as I did the chart today. Yesterday we closed at 77.91. Well, it's not quite 80, but it's close enough. I mean, this this is not exact science. It has to be 80 and it can't be over 85, but anywhere from 88 to probably 86 is legitimate. But we're hitting right smack at the 80 level right now on a weekly time frame. And we may uh, hit 80 this week if the market holds up, which I think it will. Uh, so we may, uh, but anyhow, this chart, again, once you hit between 80, 85, it's never the last or the final high. Most have uh, minor pullbacks, but normally you head higher. So we're probably in a trending market is what this says, because that's, that's the only time when this indicator hits 80. And all the red lines I have drawn back, it doesn't happen every, you know, a lot, but when it does, uh, it's worth uh, noting. So those little circles on the chart are the times when this RSI on the weekly time frame hit 80. So uh, when it happens, you know, it, it goes several years. Sometimes we don't get RSI 80 on a weekly chart. So it's pretty rare. And But the times it has did it, the market in general just kept marching higher. So I'm thinking we're in a uh, kind of a march up type period here. So I guess we're getting close to a break, aren't we? Yeah, we get about eight seconds left. So we can switch to chart three a little bit. Um, uh, all right, uh, chart three, uh, this is the daily RSI. Huh. And, it, and there we are with right, the, uh, the break. Yeah, let's, right. let's hold this for the next break because I think this deserves, you know, a full thing. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Tim, I think we were talking about the weekly RSI. This is chart three before we went to break. Actually, that was chart two. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Which is the weekly RSI hitting uh, uh, the 80 to 85 area. Then we flipped to chart three. Perfect. And it's the same story. And it's, so you got the weekly and you got the daily, mm -hmm. both RSI. So you got a lot. These these type of readings, especially when you get the weekly and daily back, both hit in the 80, that, um, that's a momentum market. And so you're dealing with a momentum market, and and uh, I listed all those times when uh, the RSI on the daily going back, I don't know, quite a few years. But a lot of times that shows up about the midpoint of the move. And the uh, RSI on the daily, I think it was around December, it's not early January, the 80 RSI uh, hit for the daily. So um, in general... It's kind of you can do a little bit of a gauge here. You're probably going to run all the way into July before the market actually starts uh, breaking up a little bit and at least create a, a, a larger consolidation. But between now and July, all well, you're going to have maybe at most a three percent pullback, which I don't think we'll even get that. But you'll have some pullback weeks, uh, but nothing significant. And even you know, like March, I think there's going to be a, a sideways market here for the month of March, but you're not gonna find a five or 10% pullback in this type of environment because momentum kind of rules all indicators. If market pulls back, it turns around, goes right back up. And that's what's probably gonna keep happening here until July, so. But moving on, so we've got momentum market. So what's that mean right now? Well, let's flip to chart four. Okay, let me get and, it up. Uh, Perfect. Perfect. Are you there? Oh, yeah. We're good to go. All right. Chart four, the top window is the 10-day trend uh, of the um, uh, ARMS index. And it goes back to uh, looks like about a, almost two years or close to it. But anyhow, I marked the times when the 10-day trend gets below 0.9. And all those little tan areas and actually, uh, um, yeah, the tan areas are times when the 10-day trend gets below 0.9. And uh, when the two-day trend gets down below 0.5, you're also going you to have some short-term highs. But we're 0.92 right now. And the market's rallying. Uh, 
and it may rally the rest of this week. I think the most powerful point of seasonality is actually tomorrow and Thursday. Okay. Uh, for uh, So whatever's going on right now is probably going to continue for at least the next two days. And Friday is kind of a toss-up, but uh, the next week is probably down. But uh, this is one of the clues that it's going to give you that once you get down b- below 0.9, you're probably going to do for consolidation. Sometimes there are uh, decent consolidations, but most of the time it's just kind of a timeout and an uptrend. So next week is down probably. Uh, this 10-day trend hitting below 0.9 is, is a warning sign. It kind of helps me with the uh, um seasonality telling that, yeah, probably next week could be a down week. So this kind of tells me, sports that idea. So let's flip to chart five. Okay. We're going to break it down even more here. So the 10-day trend's not there yet. It's 0.92, but it's probably close enough, you know, because these numbers are not set in stone. You know, sometimes 0.92 is, is the exact number. Sometimes it has to get down to... 0.88 or whatever, but 0.9 range is a danger range. So we're there, pretty much right there. But this this chart uh, is the the um, middle window is the SPX t- tilt ratio on the daily time frame. Uh, so this is using racial analysis now. So you're comparing the SPX market to the bond market, and so what happens here is is one is going up against the other too fast or going down too fast, it, it creates uh, an RSI surge where they're up or down. And the 10-day ten day, uh, 10 day RSI for the SPX tilt ratio seems to work the best. So it's a two-week type uh, RSI, not a 14-day, but a 10-day. So it's a two-week RSI. But if you notice, we had some minor pullbacks here. If you go down to... The, all those blue times when the uh, all those blue lines are times when the RSI hit above 70, and the red lines are when the RSI hit below 30. Hmm. So if you notice, it works pretty well. Matter of fact, back in of, uh, yeah December of 2024, we're testing the highs of August of 2023, and that was one of the reasons why I was kind of bullish here because the RSI of that uh, SPX tilt ratio was below 30. So that was a bullish sign back in, in uh, but December of 2023. So we kind of rallied up, and we got a couple of blue lines there. And they were just minor pullbacks that lasted maybe a week, week and a half, nothing uh, too major. And right now the RSI for this ratio is coming in 59. Uh, so, but, but right now... Uh, the market's rallying. So if the SPX keeps rallying like it is, this is earlier in the day when the SPX was pretty much flat. I mean, it was up a little bit, but not much. Right. And uh, so I'm thinking this RSI 10 for this SPX tilt ratio is going to get back up to 70 probably before this week is out. And that'd be quite a bit of, you know, evidence, I guess, that, yeah, we are probably going into a short-term high we could do for a, a week, um, you know, a week, maybe two weeks of uh, consolidation, nothing real significant, but uh, but we're not there yet. So right now, you know, it's, 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 I think we're still clear that the market can move higher on a short-term basis. So I'm kind of putting the cart in front of the horse here a little bit because sure. I'm anticipating some of these indicators to work out, but we'll have to wait and see if it does work out, but... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking for the weeks that we're probably going to see some more sort of high this week. So on Thursday, when we're back on the air, uh, I bet we're back up around that 70 range. So we'll, I'll put this chart in in, um, in the bin so we'll, we'll bring it back up and see totally where we are. Awesome. But uh, on a short-term basis here, I'm still I'm still bullish. So we can go to chart six. We got time. Yeah, we have about a minute and a half left, and then just about. Two minutes on the last break. If you want to stay for that, to you know, call numbers, or call chart seven. So, okay, uh, okay. This chart is kind of a short term. Anyhow, it's uh, the bottom window is the uh, GDX eighteen day average of GDX advanced decline. Next higher window is GDX up down volume 
with an 18-day average. I want to point out in this chart, when this chart gets up to plus 40 on both those indicators, and I mark the times going back to 2014, that happened. A lot of times they happen in search markets, so that's a blue line. So it happened five times going back, so it's pretty rare going back to 2014, it happened five times. So when it does happen, it's, it's, you know, it's not like once a year or twice a year. It's one every year or a couple, three years. But when it does happen, uh, if you get a surge in the advanced decline and up down volume, it's usually the beginning. Oops, okay, I hear the music. Yeah, just stay right there. We, like I said, it'll be like three minutes on the last break, Tim, but I would like to hear the end of this if you got it. Because the GDX is so important right. right now. So, folks, stay right there. We're going to do a quick wrap up with Tim Ord when we get back from the break. Welcome back, folks. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. We've got about two and a half minutes left. And, Tim, I would love to hear some closing thoughts on the GDX and just gold in general here. All right. What well, I want this, you know, the market's just really took off like a, a banshee over the last uh, week or so. Yeah. Market, I think, is up seven, eight days in a row. We're consolidating today. But I want these two indicators, uh, the bottom two windows, the 18-day average, up-down volume, advanced client indicators, 18-day average, to hit above plus 40. Uh, we, we did it five times the last, uh, going back 2016. The time that didn't work was last April. We got up to uh, plus 40 on both indicators. And normally, you surge higher for another at least two months, if not six months. So we got one failure, but the other four worked. So we got an 80% chance, if we do get to plus 140, that the market will surge for another two months to six months. And I'm hoping that happens. I think the, it may just the way we came off this bottom, because uh, this the market on GDX just went vertical. And you get something like that, normally you get a consolidation and you get another vertical coming. And if we do get that another vertical coming, we get to plus 40, that opens the door, we'll probably rally all the way into July. And that's what I'm thinking is probably going to happen. Now, if that happens, we go to chart seven real quick. Okay. This is the whole key to the market. You want the strong market... Uh, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline, and the top window is a cumulative up-down volume. You need both those indicators to get above the mid-Bollinger Band. And I mark the times in the past when you're above the mid-Bollinger Band, it's blue. When you're below the mid-Bollinger Band, it's, it's a red line. We've been below the, uh, the mid-Bollinger Band going back to 2021. So we really haven't been in a bull market yet as far as the markets. We've been in basically a bear market since 2021. We need a close above the mid-Bollinger Band. And for that to happen, we need the up-down volume advanced client indicator so a surge of strength here. And that's what I think they could be setting up. Tim, thank you so much. That was a fantastic analysis as always. And guys, that is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is ord-oracle.com. Tim, thank you so much, and we're going to hear from you Thursday. Right. Talk to you Thursday. Thanks a lot. Take care now.